which dog is so frightening it could easily make you pee your pants? Rottweiler, Pitbull. If these breeds are the breeds that come to mind, you just haven't heard of the Epicyon. The name literally means more than a dog, but it's actually more than anything you've ever seen. The Epicyon is the largest dog to ever roam this earth, and it was nothing like your average friendly pup. In fact, if this dog stood up on its legs, it would have towered over you and bit your entire head off. Actually, it would have done more than that. They're famously known as the bone-crushing dogs for a reason, and that reason will literally give you chills. So stay tuned as we dive into the horror show that this dog's life was, starting with its appearance. Epicyon had a typical canid body in terms of physical appearance. It was still much larger than your average friendly canine. It could reach 7.9 feet or 2.4 meters in length and approximately 220 to 275 pounds or 100 to 125 kilograms in weight. As for height, the Epicyon was probably around 35.4 inches or 90 centimeters tall at the shoulders. However, these are not strict figures. The Epicyon showed a high degree of size polymorphism, meaning that the body size, including length, height, and weight, varied widely over the entire species. But put that aside, and you'll be surprised to hear the most an Epicyon could weigh. It's estimated that the weight could go up to 375 pounds or 170 kilograms at the maximum. For comparison, that's what a female grizzly bear weighs. So if the Epicyon easily compared to the deadliest bear known to man, imagine how it'd look next to other members of its own family. Take, for instance, the gray wolf. Now the gray wolf is considered the largest living member of the entire Canidae family. And yet, it's much smaller in all aspects when compared to the extinct Epicyon. Adult gray wolves measure approximately 31.5 to 33.5 inches or 80 to 85 centimeters tall. And while that's not a huge height difference, the difference in weight and length is astounding. The length of gray wolves ranges from 3.5 feet to 5.5 feet, or 1 to 1.6 meters long, and the weight is estimated at approximately 88.2 pounds on average, or 40 kilograms. Now, even though some gray wolves size up to an extraordinary weight of 175 pounds, or 80 kilograms, that is still over 200 pounds less than the largest Epicyon. So, even though the Epicyon was not much taller than the Grey Wolf, it was undoubtedly much longer and heavier, making it a far stronger predator. But the entire credit for Epicyon's hunting capabilities does not go to its size alone. The Epicyon also had a remarkably powerful jaw. Both its premolars and canine teeth were specifically enlarged, meaning it could cut through skin, flesh, and even bone. But more about that later. As for the rest of its morphology, the Epicyon pretty much resembled any other canid, which begs the question of how the Epicyon was discovered as a separate genus in the first place. The Epicyon's birth can be traced back to the discovery of a single jawbone in Nebraska over 160 years ago. At first look, this jawbone did not seem so special and was initially thought to belong to a wolf. But as more fossils were unearthed, scientists realized they couldn't have been farther off. Further discoveries, especially complete skulls, revealed that this skull was very different from a wolf's. In fact, it was more similar to the skulls of lions or hyenas, particularly because of its specialized features. At the same time, the rest of its body still resembled other members of the canine family. So this was either a hybrid between feline and canine, or it was simply a canid unlike any we'd ever seen before. All it took was one close examination to find out its true heritage. Scientists identified special traits in its skull, particularly a unique premolar and a heavy jaw, traits that were incredibly unique to just one subfamily of canids. They were distinct from the entire Canidae family, known for their powerful teeth, short but strong jaws, and fifth toes. These creatures roamed North America for over 15 million years, with sizes ranging from smaller than a fox to larger than gray wolves and the largest of these creatures had just been discovered. In fact, it was so massive that only the name Epicyon, meaning more than a dog, could do justice to this beast. But not all Epicyons could live up to this name, which meant there had to be a subclassification. The Epicyon was further classified into three species. 
Eleurodontoides, Savus, and Hedini, with size being the major difference between the three. However, the Episcion Hedini was the largest of the three and is considered the true Episcion. Once you hear about the size difference for yourself, you'll know why. The height of Episcion Savus has been estimated at only 22 inches or 56 centimeters at the shoulder and the weight at 146 pounds or 66.5 kilograms. The Episcion Eleurodontoides had similar physical characteristics as well. So the question is, do these two species even deserve to be called Episcion? The short answer is yes. Despite being smaller than Hedini, Eleurodontoides and Savus were still quite big, with adults sometimes weighing twice the weight of an adult German Shepherd. But one thing's for sure, Episcion Hedini is definitely the type species, and the only one that truly lives up to its name. However, the question is, where did this dog, that was in all aspects more than a dog, come from? In order to understand where Episcion and in turn all canids came from, we've got to go back all the way to the dinosaurs. The extinction of non-avian or land dinosaurs approximately 66 million years ago favored the appearance and diversification of carnivorans. Roughly 50 million years ago, carnivorans split into feline forms and canine forms. The carnivorans in turn gave rise to the entire Canidae family that we know today. The earliest identifiable member of the Canidae family appeared 40 million years ago and is now called Prosperocyon wilsoni. Soon after, the family divided into three subfamilies, Borophaginae, Caninae, and Hesperocyoninae. Out of these three, only Caninae has managed to survive till this day. While the remaining two subfamilies did go extinct, they had their glorious period of ruling North America, especially the Borophaginae. The most primitive member of the Barphigenae subfamily is the Archaeocyon, a pretty small animal. Over time, this subfamily diversified, giving rise to other groups that included much larger canids. The Episcion is now a member of the Barophagena subtribe, classified under the Barophagenae subfamily and the Barophageni tribe. Other members of this group are Paractomarctus, Saprocyon, and Barophagus. The Episcion genus was named in 1958 by Joseph Leidy, and as you know, it was initially classified under the Canis genus, but was later confirmed to have been a Borophagene group. Now, even though all three subfamilies were Canids, the Borophaginae were remarkably dominant over the other two. Their members ended up outhunting the members of the Caninae and Hesperosononinae, simply because they were better predators. While the Caninae remained small and preyed on smaller animals, the Borophaginae started competing with the Hesperocyoninae to the point that the entire Hesperocyoninae subfamily went extinct. It was only a matter of physical strength, and the Hesperocyoninae just couldn't compete with the strong jaws and the bone-crushing teeth of the Borophaginae. However, you'll see that despite being one of the most effective hunters of their time, even the Borophaginae couldn't evolve enough and eventually met their demise. We'll talk about how that happened towards the end of this video. Now, let's look into this beast's royal and nutritious diet. But wait, before we do that, why don't I tell you how this dog hunted? Based on its physical characteristics, it's likely that Episcion was not a very good runner. Sure, it could have run at much higher speeds than other canids, but it certainly wouldn't have been able to keep that pace for long. At least this is valid for Episcion Hedini, which was larger. But Episcion Savus may have been a better runner than its larger relative. Hedini, on the other hand, probably relied on bursts of speed, suggesting an ambushing technique. Based on its inability to chase its prey over long distances, this dog's ambushing technique needed to be extremely effective, requiring not more than one clean blow. And that's exactly what it did, courtesy of having Borophagenae features. You see, the Episcion had a very strong bite, which made it stand out among all carnivores. Its large premolars and canines were strategically positioned in its jaw, and add to that its strong muscles and sturdy jaw bones, and all it needed was one bite to dominate its prey. Rough estimates suggest its bite force could exceed 16,000 newtons, which is almost similar to the bite force of large American alligators. With such force, Episcion could easily penetrate the skin, flesh, and bones of its prey, often targeting vulnerable areas like the neck, head, or spine. 
With a bite force this strong, you can guess this dog would have taken on much bigger prey than even itself. Studies on Epicyon's teeth and its environment indicate its primary diet included camels, pronghorns, horses, peccaries, and even large animals like rhinoceroses, such as the Titanotherus, which could reach lengths of up to 4 meters or 13 feet and weigh nearly 4,000 pounds or 2 tons. These larger prey animals likely proved to be a very efficient energy source for Epicyon. Plus, since this beast could easily chew through bone, and digest bone marrow, which was extremely nutritious, you can see how it grew to a size this big in the first place. So clearly, its diet worked wonders for it. Since it was able to migrate and expand its habitat all over North America, it was widely distributed across North America. In fact, its fossils have been discovered in over more than 10 states, including Florida, Nebraska, Montana, Kansas, New Mexico, Texas, Colorado, Oklahoma, Idaho, Oregon, Arizona, California, Alberta, and even Canada. It's believed that the Epicyon preferred living and hunting in open areas, while other Boraphaginae, like the Alurodon, preferred more forested regions. During the Miocene, when the Epicyon was alive, the world was going through a period of dryness caused by global cooling, which in turn affected the ability of the atmosphere to absorb moisture. During the Miocene, North America featured a dry, non-seasonal, mid-continent climate, which was the result of the appearance of the Sierra Nevada and Cascade mountain ranges. Since trees can't thrive in this kind of climate, they were replaced by grass all over the region. So, the Epicyon's predominant habitats on the territory were grasslands. But, it was not alone in roaming the newly formed grasslands of North America, and the Epicyon shared its habitat with a ton of different creatures. These included mammals such as rodents like Amabilodon, Calipus, Spermophilus, Perognathus, Eucaster, Dipoids, Hypolagus, Talpinae, Sorex, Myotis, Lazurus, Apicamelus, Cosorex, and Teleoceris. Reptiles were also part of its ecosystem, with alligators, crocodiles, rattlesnakes, vipers, boas, rat snakes, king snakes, mud turtles, box turtles, as well as frogs and toads. There were also numerous other carnivores sharing its environment. These included Agriotherium, Barbarophilus, Amphimacaridus, Leptocyon, bear dogs, and even other members of the Barophagine subfamily. This rich diversity of species likely influenced Epicyon's behavior, interactions, and ultimately, its survival strategies. The abundance of predators coexisting with Epicyon has also sparked much interest in how they interacted. Sadly, finding direct evidence of these interactions has proven quite challenging. Despite this, due to its size, most predators likely avoided confrontations with Epicyon, possibly even surrendering carcasses to it. Only the Agriotherium or Barbarophilus, which were equal or larger in size, might have posed a threat. But other than them, no one was particularly interested in getting their bones crushed by this beast. So ultimately, this lack of competition and abundance of prey meant the Epicyon Hedini and other Boraphaginae evolved so large that they could only hunt massive prey. They simply couldn't catch smaller prey. Even that wasn't so bad until the cats came along and invaded North America. See, the cats were excellent hunters, probably even better than the ferocious Boraphaginae. They started competing with Boraphaginae for food, eventually outhunting them and leaving the Caninae untouched, which is why it survived until today. In the end, Epicyon has left a lasting mark on our understanding of prehistoric carnivores. Existing from the early to late Miocene, it coexisted with various mammalian species, showcasing its adaptability and ecological importance. But perhaps the most impressive features seen in them are their impressive size and specialized bone-crushing teeth. And that's a wrap. If you had to defend yourself against an Epicyon, what would be your biggest concern? Its massive bulk or its sharp, bone-crushing teeth? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.